Hi, I'm back at the airport. This time I'm flying from London Heathrow through to Perth, Australia on their direct service. It's the only direct air link between the UK and Australia. 17 odd hours in a uh, Qantas 787. There's only one small issue. I'm currently in Amsterdam. So I've got to get over to, uh, to London first and then jump on that Qantas flight. Now to get to London, I'm jumping on British Airways, which in their heyday was known as the world's favorite airline. Sadly, those days are long gone. However, today, they're uh, taking me to London to connect onto this Qantas flight. So uh, let's go and enjoy the BA service. My end destination on this trip is actually Adelaide. So we'll see if flying via London and a direct route to Perth and then connecting to Adelaide is any better than uh, going via the Gulf or uh, Singapore or, or Hong Kong. My British Airways flight was an uneventful 60 minute hop over to London on an A320. I was flying BA's European business class, which like all European airlines is essentially an economy class seat with the middle seat blocked off. Morning tea was served and consisted mainly of cold cuts, which was actually just what I felt like. We got some really nice views of London on the way into Heathrow. And then some really cool Avgeek views as we came into land. Time here is an hour behind Amsterdam, so just approaching quarter past ten in the morning. Okay, we've arrived at Heathrow, 90 minutes to my Qantas flight departs. Let's go. Meanwhile, my body says it's about 5:30 in the morning. I started this journey in Detroit and flew from with uh, Delta One to Amsterdam this morning. Uh, during that flight, I slept for about 20 minutes, so not much sleep. If you haven't seen that review. It's on my channel, just check it out. I uh, was really impressed with the Delta One product. I'll put the link below. I had very little time in the lounge, so rather than filming, I decided to use my time more wisely. A super quick transfer, a rush through the airport, and made it into the Qantas lounge just with enough time to uh, have an espresso martini. The perfect way to start a 17 hour flight. Cheers, here's to a great flight. It's time to fly, let's go. Thank you very much. Bye bye, thank you. Let's do it. Today's ride would be on a 787-9, which was delivered back in June 2018 and was named after the most famous kangaroo that ever lived, Skippy. Those of you who weren't brought up in Australia in the 70s and 80s will have to look up Skippy on YouTube. Champagne's the only way to start. Oh though, yeah, that's the nice, the best way to start the flight, right? Thank you. Well, you're very welcome. You know what's coming. Cheers, here's to a great flight.
Now is also a good time to remind you to consider subscribing to my channel, but only if you like that sort of thing, no pressure. Just make sure you do it though. Before we get stuck into the review, let's have a closer look at today's route. This London to Perth service is currently the world's third longest flight, coming in at just over 9,000 miles. Flying time is regularly over 17 hours, but today, with some nice tailwinds and the fact that we were flying downhill, the flight time was just over 16 hours. What makes this flight so special over the other ultra-long-haul flights out there is that this one links two previously unlinked continents. Never before have Europe and Australia been served by a scheduled non-stop service. Normally, flying between Europe and Australia requires a refuelling stop in one of the big hub airports in the Gulf or Asia. This non-stop flight is part of Qantas's Project Sunrise, which will eventually see non-stop links from the east coast of Australia through to London and New York. The business class cabin on the Qantas 787 is laid out in a 1-2-1 configuration, which means every seat has direct aisle access. Couples are probably best sitting in the middle seats, however due to the staggered seat design, none of the seats are that close to each other, so couples could also just go with the window seats one behind the other. I did also wander back behind the curtain to check out Premium Economy, which was laid out in a 2-3-2 configuration. Behind Premium Economy was the main economy cabin, featuring a 3-3-3 configuration. I was definitely sitting in the best seats in the house. The seats on this aircraft are consistent with those offered by Qantas on their A330 aircraft. They're a massive improvement on the shell seats featured on the Qantas 747 and A380. As mentioned before, these seats are staggered, which means that some are closer to the aisle and some are closer to the window. I was sitting on one of the aisle side seats. These are not quite as private, however they do allow for easier access during meal times as the armrest can be lowered. What I like most about these seats is their practical design. Everything you need is within easy reach, including the USB port and power socket. There's also plenty of space to spread out and store your stuff. The storage compartment next to your seat is the perfect place to store your shoes for easy access for going to the bathroom in the middle of the night. Seat adjustments were easy using this central control panel and the seat itself was very comfortable, offering good support including a leg rest. There was plenty of leg room and good width across the shoulders and the seat. All in all, an excellent seat for a very long flight. Before lunch, let's have a look at the in-flight amenities provided for this flight. The very colourful amenities kit contains some lotions and potions by a spa and various other things to make the flight more comfortable. Long haul Qantas business class flight means guarantee of one thing and that is in-flight pyjamas. Now uh, regular viewers will know that I'm a great lover of in-flight pyjamas because they just make a trip far more comfortable. So let's have a look what the uh, Qantas in-flight pyjamas look like these days. Here we go. So here they are. The big, kang the big kangaroo on the front and grey all the way down. Now remember, as soon as you've got your pyjamas on, you are confined to the business class cabin because if you go wandering through the aircraft in premium economy or economy class with your uh, business class pyjamas on, everybody's going to think you're a dickhead. So stay in the business class cabin where everybody's wearing these. So it's one big pyjama party for the next 15 and a half hours to Perth. Once in the air, service started with a drink from the bar. To prepare myself for a post-lunch sleep, I went with a Baileys on ice. This was accompanied by some sort of deep fried canapé. I can't remember what it was. It was okay, but I would have preferred some warm nuts. By now, we were just flying over Frankfurt Airport, one of several European cities, including Paris and Rome, that Qantas used to fly to. I show the full food and drink menus at the end of the video. That way we can get stuck straight into the food now, as I'm really hungry. Lunch started with potato and leek soup, which really hit the spot. This was served with Qantas's excellent crusty sourdough bread and a simple green salad. For mains, I went with the seared cod with ancho chili, green beans, rice pilaf and pepita almond and walnut salsa. It was delicious. I didn't have any wine with my meal, but here is what was on offer. By now, I was exhausted with jet lag, so I skipped dessert and instead made up my bed. 
The bed comes with a seat mattress topper for extra comfort. A soft quilt and large pillow complete the picture. Sometimes the foot space on aircraft beds can be an issue, but not here. These Qantas seats feature plenty of foot room. I have well and truly hit the wall, so uh, about 10 hours sleep should do me just fine about now. We'll see how this Qantas uh, business class lie flat bed goes. Uh, good night. I didn't quite manage 10 hours sleep, but seven and a half hours is a solid effort, and I woke up just as we were passing Sri Lanka. Whilst the rest of the cabin was still asleep, I had myself a cup of tea and an Aussie treat and got some work done on my KLM 747 video. I also checked out the snacks available in the galley. However, jet lag was telling me the hole in my stomach could only be filled with a fried chicken burger, so that's exactly what I ordered. And it was sensational. While I devour this, let me show you the Qantas Entertainment System. I thought the entertainment system was excellent. It can be controlled using this remote, however I found the touch screen just as easy. There were heaps of choices for TV, movies and music. Noise cancelling headphones were provided, but I tend to use my own. In light of Qantas being such a long haul focus carrier, they have a very strong focus on well-being on board. Their collection of meditation videos was excellent and the views featured on their coastal one were stunning. I therefore arrived in Perth, all zenned up. Now Australians take their coffee very seriously, and so does Qantas. So the cabin is just waking up for the morning, and Leanne here is busy making the uh, latte piccolos and the espressos. Here's your espresso. Thank you very much. Enjoy. Cheers, thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. And the verdict? Delicious, you're always guaranteed a good coffee on Qantas. Once the cabin had had their caffeine shots, it was time for brunch. Still conscious of the fact that I'd skipped dessert, I took the sweet option. Buttermilk pancakes with lemon curd and berries, together with some fresh fruit and yogurt. To counterbalance the pancakes, I also had the spinach, cucumber, apple, celery and lemon juice. Look mum, I'm being healthy. As we land, it's a good time for me to reflect on this direct flight and how it compares to flying via Asia or the Gulf. If you're living in Perth and going to London, it's a no-brainer. This direct service is excellent. If you're living in other Australian cities, the advantage is not so great. Whilst the transfer in Perth is very easy, Perth Airport pales in comparison to Singapore's Shangi or even Doha or Dubai airports. Also note that the onward connection from Perth will often be in a smaller 737 aircraft, especially if you're going on to Adelaide or Brisbane. That said, the quality of the Qantas onboard service and those business class seats certainly make this a very compelling proposition, especially if the alternative is the older Qantas A380 business class product flying to London out of Sydney and Melbourne via Singapore. See you later. Thanks for a great flight. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. That was brilliant. And how nice is it to be home? Five flights from Vegas to Perth. Now just one more sector and then I'm home. That's it, I've landed in Perth, flown here non-stop all the way from London. Quite a novel flight. Um, still can't get my head around that we can cover those distances in one go. Really good flight though, onboard service was fantastic. The crew were wonderful, seat very comfortable, food fantastic as well. Also managed to get about seven and a half hours sleep, so happy with that. Not that I know what uh, time it is, according to uh, my body. In Detroit it's 1am, I could be on Amsterdam time, could be on London time, or could be at Detroit time. All I do know is that from here, I've got one more flight until I get home. That's a uh, 737 domestic service with uh, Qantas. So uh, let me go and do that. And uh, in the meantime, if you go and check out my channel, where you'll find a whole lot of other reviews and more on the way. Look, thanks for watching. If you, watch the, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment. And uh, as always, happy travels.